something has happened in the world of astronomy um, that doesn't often happen. So lots of astronomers all over the world are getting very excited. The universe usually takes its time. We're quite used to talking about events that happen over billions of years. It's not often that we actually see something unfolding before our eyes. But this is what's happening right now. A star went kaboom. So what we've seen is a supernova, an exploding star happening in a galaxy almost next door to us. Not just any old galaxy, a galaxy we know and love called M82. This is a galaxy that's been studied for many, many years. Um, it's one that many astronomers would recognize straight off the bat. It's interesting because it's a starburst galaxy. It's a galaxy where lots of stuff is going on. Lots of stars are being formed, and these, for these stars are producing massive winds. They're exploding, that are producing more winds that are pushing material out of this galaxy. So this week, we've actually seen a star explode in this galaxy. And that's exciting for a number of different reasons. It is close, it's only 12 million light years away. That's practically next door in astronomical terms. Well, if you look up in the sky, lots of people in the Northern Hemisphere know the Big Dipper. Apologies to your viewers in the Southern Hemisphere, you're not gonna get to see this. But it's very near the Big Dipper. It's an object that you could normally see through telescopes or even binoculars, but now it's got this extra luminous object embedded in it, which is this exploding star. It's currently been reported at a magnitude of nearly 12, so that makes it an object that you could see in a telescope. But the exciting thing about this is that we've actually caught it on the way up. Telegrams, in the electronic sense, have been flying fast and quickly around the world, reporting on this discovery. Lots of people taking their own images, reporting the magnitude, reporting the brightness. The supernova happen across the universe all the time, but they don't often happen near to us. We don't want them to happen too near to us because that would do very bad things to us here on Earth. Um, but we're very excited to see something go off nearby so that we can get a really detailed look at it. So we can have multiple types of supernova which indicate how we think that they, they formed, what was there beforehand. So a type 2 supernova is simply a very, very massive star collapsing in on itself. It's called a core collapse supernova. But a type 1a supernova, and that's the type we think we're looking at here, is something quite different. This is formed, we think, by um, two stars next to each other, one of which is a white dwarf, a very special kind of star, creating lots of material. It takes material from its companion until it can't take any more. It's being held up by electron degeneracy pressure, and once it reaches a certain mass, it simply cannot sustain its, itself anymore. The pressure is not great enough, and there's a runaway fusion reaction, which produces an enormous explosion. Now, type 1As excite you guys, don't they? Oh, they're pretty useful for a number of different reasons. First, they tell us about the end stages of stars' lifetimes, but they also tell us about the universe itself, because we use them as what are called standard candles to measure distances in the universe. And if we can measure distances in the universe, we can measure the ultimate fate in the, of our universe. And many viewers will recall that the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for the discovery of the accelerated expansion of the universe, in the late 90s, and that accelerated expansion was discovered precisely by measuring the brightness of type 1a supernova. Now, to do that work rests on a number of assumptions involving how well you understand type 1a supernova. If you're using them as standard candles, you're saying we know how these things will look no matter how far away we put them. Of course, we may not be so certain about the details, which is why having something right next door is important. We may not know all we think we do about the progenitor, the star that, that was there before the supernova occurred. We may not know how the brightness of the supernova depends on how much dust is around it. There's lots of things that a very detailed look at a nearby super, type 1a supernova will help us understand, or not. It may be a game changer and tell us that we don't understand things nearly as well as we think we do. No one knew this was gonna happen. So how can you know things about the progenitor and, like, unfortunately all the evidence has been blown to bits, hasn't it? Like, how can you now go and find out what caused it? Well, that's the wonderful thing about ha having it happen in a galaxy as well studied in M82. We've been taking pictures of M82 for decades. So already people have identified that there are images from the Hubble Space Telescope taken in the infrared that may be able to see through 
any dust enshrouding the progenitor that could very well be well resolved enough to see what was there before. Even, even more than that, people have been reporting on images that they've been taking over the past few weeks and a Japanese group has reported that they actually have images of this thing over the past week gaining slowly in brightness. Interestingly, it was so close that it was so bright that the automatic supernova detections from major telescopes didn't, didn't pick it up because it produced too much light. It saturated the images and so it wasn't detected. So when the telegram came through reporting the confirmation of this supernova as a type 1a, it was confirmed as a young red type 1a. Red means that it's embedded in dust. Just as when we look at the setting sun, it becomes red because we're looking through the atmosphere and the atmosphere has particles in it. So too, as we look through the galaxy, um, material in the galaxy or around the young supernova can change how the, the light appears from that supernova. Is that good or bad? Well, it's, it's an unknown. So it's good and bad. How dust changes how the light from a supernova appears um, will again have really important implications for how we use these things as standard candles to understand the distant universe. We don't understand how the, the, the light from those galaxies changes um, for a dusty environment or a non-dusty environment. We won't be able to measure the expansion of the universe, the mysterious dark energy, as well as we would want to. Um, but that's, that's, if you like, that's the before picture. And now we have also the after picture I'll try and show in kind of the same orientation. So here is the picture that was taken just a night or two ago. And you can see, actually, they've kindly labeled this extra point in here. But it's, it's, you play this game of sort of matching up asterism. So you match up patterns of stars. So there's a group of three stars here, which we can match up with those three stars here.